Love songs, why are they so important? Love songs are important, one, because it's something everybody feels, and even if they're not feeling it right then, they aspire to it. They wanna be in love, you know? Uh, they experience love, they fall out of love, they, you know, have ups and downs within their love relationship. It's just something everybody feels, and I think that's why so many songwriters write about it. Music and love just go together. Had a I stayed away too long. Did I leave your mind when I was gone? I want you as the one of the albums I listen to the most out of Marvin's catalog. And uh, from what I've heard, Leon was primarily responsible for that album, for the creative side of that album. So just that in itself is a remarkable contribution to soul music and the music in general. I want to be where you are. I got to be where you are. And uh, also I know that I sampled some of Leon's work for, uh, for my song, So High. You got me up so high, my shoes are scraping the sky. That's him. Two people just meeting. Inside my love. That's one of the best songs of of all time. Many Ripperton Inside My Love is one of my favorite songs. He probably didn't get his due because some of his work was behind the scenes, but I think the people who know know that he's one of the greats. A lot of times, the most important thing in a track is just the overall feeling it gives you. It's not, for me, it's not exactly about what words are saying, but how they craft the record, how they craft the record to make it beautiful and to make it mean something. And the best music makes you feel closer to God. And that's what beauty is to me. And so the records that really win and that, that make you want to listen over and over again are the ones that are truly beautiful and that elevate you and make you feel closer to God. Well, when I started, I was writing songs my whole childhood, um, pretty much since I was probably eight or nine. I was writing songs. I was playing the piano before then. I was singing before then. But by the time I was eight or nine, I started writing songs that my choir could sing in church and writing songs that I could sing to girls on the phone and try to, you know, make them be my girlfriend. And, uh, and um, so already then, I felt like I could put a song together and uh, I could put my words and my music together and make them make sense and make them entertain other people mm. and make them move people, other mm. people, even back then. And uh, when I really started to take it seriously and say, I'm about to make an album, I'm about to become a recording artist mm. and, and be a star or whatever, uh, when I started to really start to make that happen was in college. But before then even, I knew what I wanted to do. Uh, I knew uh, that I wanted to sing for everybody, I wanted everybody to hear me. I was in all kinds of talent shows, everything, just trying to get to that place. Um, but I started to really see a broader reach and a broader uh, an ability to, to really change people with the, my songs by the time I was in college. And I was probably 16, 17 years old. And uh, that's when I really knew, you know, this is what I'm about to do the rest of my life and mm. this is how I'm going to do it. I just saw the path right mm. there. I, I had to be reminded. Because I was doing it for about a year and a half, playing the piano for different sessions and stuff. Can I say, hey man, you know, you could make, because I, I would walk out the session. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is getting paid. I just love doing it. My connection to the piano uh, has been so much a part of my life. It's, as the phrase was so to me, like about 19 years old, I said, man, you know, when you really arrive, you become your instrument. Mm -hmm. So I've said for the past almost 25, 30 years, say, I've long past become my instrument. I, I, I must become. It's like the only thing that's lacking. I, 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 I you, you, this don't look like ivory. 
<laughs> this is Ivory. It just looks like meat and skin. Art in general that is beautiful, especially music that is beautiful. I always feel like the feeling I get is closer to God when I hear something beautiful. I believe God is in everything that we do. Yeah. Everything. The, huh, the beauty of where I'm at, at 66 years old, and I said tonight, just briefly I'll say this, did you know, um, me and Marvin and um, a few people 30 years ago were a bit pushing the envelope when we were talking about how we get used to the head and different things, slightly pushing the envelope. Now that's being said, and, uh, and uh, everything else, right? Mm -hmm. Again, um, we were after the same goal that's being uh, uh, sought after and will be uh, as long as man is on this planet and man is still a human. Um, but the beauty of my manifestation of saying and from innuendos to uh, blatantly uh, uh, even coming close to pornographic, this whole process is very godlike because what we're doing and my whole premise for being proud to call myself a sensual minister, I've been laughed at when I came up and being happy. Not so much laughed at, but it's, it's like a chuckle. You, I get from people that say, <laughs> yeah, sensual minister. I say, yeah, sensual minister. But check this out. I say, in simplicity, all I'm reminding you and everybody on the planet is to cherish where we come from. Mm -hmm. We come from sensuality. We come from sex. Not a bad mm -hmm. place. It's in fact, it's in a fact, beautiful thing. No, no, no. And in, fact, and in fact, out of all the isms on the planet, I stress, had man not been so insecure, he would have made sensualism the first place to get on his knees and pray. Because he would have been then praying to who he is himself. All of us. And my, my manifestation, because I come from the church where I went to church every day, seven days a week as a mm -hmm. boy in Dallas with me. So me too. Old enough has always come from here. I've never lied about my heart. Yeah. At this point, I really feel glad that I can say to my granddaughter, what I was saying on those records wasn't bad. I was alluring people to go to the bed. I was alluring people to do various things to each other. But in essence, when you allure, anyone on this planet to touch each other, to be, uh, to, to get inside each other because we go further than just the flesh. All my music and your music, all our music is, we have, there's levels that we can take people to and that, and that depends upon them. We open some doors. They come in the door, in that door they can, you know, they carry on, right? And, but but we, we at least are that, that, new, or that, that that aroma, that atmosphere, that that essence that makes what a spirit, spirit cannot refuse. I tell everybody, continue to listen, because I'm still learning every day. That's what you'll do. I listen to him and learn, that's and um, every week I'm trying to find new inspiration, new albums that'll um, make me. I just wrote a song called Inspiration. I'm trying to get get music that moves me and uh, make music that moves other people oh. and moves me. Oh. Uh, oh. And so when I buy music and listen to music, that's what I'm going for. And uh, I feel like in this past bit of time, I've been listening to a lot of music that moved me and trying to keep the rest of the music out of my head. Um, and uh, one of the albums that I've been listening to a lot to actually lately is I Want You. Um, oh. I had it for a long oh. time, but lately, like the last three to six months while I was preparing to make this new album. Not on purpose, but I just happened to be in the mood to hear I Want You a lot. And uh, and so that's one of those musics that move me. <laughs> Some sexuality in music today comes off a bit crass and and isn't sexy in a good way. Isn't sensual. Uh, isn't sensual, isn't sexy. Um, sensual, I think, means you're in touch with how you feel and how you want to feel and how you want to make someone else feel. The beauty of sex in itself is it's like people say very, very sexy things mm -hmm. but lack the sensuality. And the sensuality is like the difference in uh, having sex and making mm -hmm. love. And making love. You know? I agree with that. And uh, what I've been actually what I've been working on this new album is every phrase 
that I write needs to reflect that, the right sensibility. And if I'm talking about something that I want to sound beautiful and sensual, I have to make every word, even the way it sounds, not just the actual lyric, but the, the way it rolls mm, off my mouth, mm, mm, be sensual. Mm, mm, and uh, mm, that's one of the things I've been so working on. So what's the difference? The, the art of singing a line is the same art as expressing a line that an actor has to. Mm -hmm. you, you'll learn it. Some people are so gifted in their delivery, they, they tend to take each message in their heart or in their, both in their heart and in their, in their natural ability, and they do things with them innately. Uh, other people have to learn, from Barry to Marvin to the different singers through our time. We all become, as I call it, uh, uh, Love warriors, you know, um, soldiers of love, you know. Yeah. It's, the, it's the art of singing a phrase and singing a song and watching a lady come out of her panties. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, that's the goal. <laughs> and, uh, I've had quite a few ladies come out of their panties oh, I'm sure. to, to Leon Ware's music. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Works every time. Works every time. <laughs>